Our processional hymn is in the blue hymn book, hymn number 487. Hymn number 487. Come down, O love divine, sing thou this soul of mine, and visit it with thine own utter glowing. O comforter, draw near, within my heart of fear, and kindle it thy holy flame bestowing. O let it freely burn, till earthly passions turn to dust and ashes in its heat consuming. And let thy glorious light shine ever on my sight, and clothe me round the while my path illuming. Let holy charity mine outward vesture be, and lowliness become my inner clothing. True lowliness of heart, which takes the humbler part, and all its own shortcomings weeps with loathing. And so thy yearning strong, with which the soul will long, shall far outcast the power of human telling. For none can guess its grace, till he become the place wherein the Holy Spirit makes his dwelling. Let us pray together the call it for pure. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto thee, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only O Christ with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect Lesson and Gospel for the day of Pentecost, commonly called Whit Sunday, are found beginning on page 205. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. 
God, who has at this time did teach the hearts of thy faithful people by the sending to them the light of thy Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Christ Jesus our Savior, who liveth and reigneth thee in the unity of the same Spirit, one God world without end. Amen. Please, be, please be seated for the reading of the lesson. The lesson is written in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it rested upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were bewildered because that each man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Here ends the lesson. The Whit Sunday anthems are found on page 204. Page 204. I invite you to stand as we say together the Whit Sunday anthems. O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things, Christ being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost hath shed forth this which ye now see and hear. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 15th verse. Glory, Glory be, be to, to thee, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said unto his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me. Because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, 
How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men for our salvation came down to us, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary, and was made, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven. And sit upon the right hand of God. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe, one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm sure that you all recognize those words. They are, of course, the words spoken by the Archangel Gabriel to a young woman named Mary. Words which spoke of the great honor that she was given when God called her to be the mother of the Messiah. Words spoken when she responded to that great honor with all of its very real dangers and threats and risk with her words of Simple trust and hope. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Now, you may be thinking that this is a very odd way to start a homily on Whit Sunday, on the day of Pentecost, on this day when we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and Jerusalem's Apostles and disciples in Jerusalem on this day when we, which marks the very beginning of the church's life. But there is a reason why I have asked you to think about what the Archangel Gabriel said to Mary so many years before the day of Pentecost. Because just before his ascension, Jesus said something remarkably similar, virtually identical to those same apostles and disciples. But you will receive power, Jesus said. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I want us to try to imagine how these two apparently different events, the incarnation of Christ in the Blessed Virgin Mary and the birth of the church in Jerusalem, as two sides of the same coin, as two parts of the very same reality. That just as the angel tells Mary that God is about to do something completely new, something that he's never done before, 
that God is about to bring new life into her life, a life like no other life in the history of all life. So Jesus is saying to the apostles and disciples before the day of Pentecost that God is about to do something completely new, something that he's never done before, that God is about to bring new life into them, a life like no other life in the history of all life. I think that it's essential for us to see the connection between these two apparently different events, if we are to even begin to understand what we're celebrating here on the Feast of Pentecost on Whit Sunday. Because it's incredibly easy to just get caught up in all the bold and dramatic images and forget what's really happening. When Jesus speaks to his apostles and disciples about the work of the Holy Spirit in them and on them, in exactly the same terms that the angel speaks about the work of the Holy Spirit in Mary. He's pointing, I think, to a radically new kind of life that the church is going to be given. That just as the incarnate Christ was given life in Mary by the Holy Spirit, so the risen and ascended Christ is given a new way of life in them by the Holy Spirit. That just as they are being remade and reshaped into the image of Christ, so Christ is, in a sense, being incarnated in them. They are no longer to be just followers and disciples of Christ. By the Holy Spirit, they are to be the body of Christ, to be Christ in flesh and blood to the world. New life given to them, that new life might flow from them. It is as simple and as incomprehensible as that. And just as in God's plan, each and every life has purpose, so the life of the church, the life of Christ's body, has a purpose. And that's why this week's gospel speaks over and over again about love, about our love for Christ, because the purpose of this spirit-filled church is to heal the brokenness and division of every human heart. That's why we hear that on the day of Pentecost, once all the commotion and confusion of wind and flame have settled down, the first sign that something radically new is happening is the power they were given to speak and hear in new tongues. Not just a sign of how they were being directed to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all peoples and all languages. Surely that's true. But also a clear sign that God called and formed and sent out this spirit-led church to heal the brokenness and division of language to heal the curse of the Tower of Babel. The curse passed on to every generation of humanity, of not being able or not being willing to speak the unifying language of love. And that's why in this, in this week's gospel, Jesus speaks of peace to his disciples before his death, just as he will again just a few days later on the day of his resurrection. Surely peace in their hearts and peace in our hearts, but just as importantly, peace in every heart, especially those hearts that struggle right now, every day, in the face of division and rejection and injustice. Now, I don't need to tell you about division. I don't need to tell you about the brokenness of this world. We see it every day in the countless ways in which we divide ourselves, the countless ways in which we categorize and dismiss each other, whether politically or culturally or racially or ethnically or economically. Times of great stress serve to accentuate the fault lines that have been there all along. And the fears of uncertainty that we see around us right now only force those cracks even wider. That's why it's so incredibly important for us to be the body of Christ right now. And to make sure that every word we say, every thought we have, is a word or a thought of unity rather than division. A word of forgiveness rather than rejection. Because it is so easy just to speak that other broken, divided language. The language that tears apart what God calls us to bring together. The language that sees others not as brothers and sisters, but as enemies or op opponents. The language that closes rather than opens our hearts and our ears. The language that feels threatened by difference. It's so easy just to hear that divisive language all around us, to hear it on TV, to see it on Facebook, to hear it from family and friends and neighbors, and just assume that it must be okay, that it must be right. I think it is 
for times such as these that God has made his church. That it is for times such as these that God has given to us his Holy Spirit. And it is in such times as we now find ourselves that it is all the more important, all the more essential that we be the church to heal the broken, to draw together the divided. That's what the Feast of Pentecost means. And that's who we're called to be. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power this day and forevermore. Amen. Whatsoever ye would that men should do unto you, even do so do unto them, for this is the law and the prophet. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thy own. Amen. We offer this Holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God of thanksgiving for the gift of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and disciples in Jerusalem and upon us as his church. Let us pray that we might seek unity over division, that we might seek compassion over resentment, that we might seek love over hatred. We might heal the divisions and breaches of this broken world. Let us pray this day for Christian people throughout the world at this most holy time, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of all the saints, that we might share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David Archbishop, for Canna Paul Jeffries, rector, and all the staff and students at Bishop McAllister College and Anglican Seminary in Uganda, for Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Ho in Ghana, for the people of our sister parish here in Fredericton, the parish of St. Peter and Canon Russ have their rector, and for all of our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Anglican communion, for our fellow Christians everywhere, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people, for those who work in police forces across this nation, and for all first responders, that they might be kept safe in all their duties. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity that preserve from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Yemen, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Ukraine. Remember the work of the Queen's forces to protect and preserve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for a new awareness of God's love, that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for all the sick, especially Ruth, Lloyd, Donna, John, Dana, Wanda, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Edmund, Weston, Mary, Lois, Kathy, Joanne, Reed, Gerard, Lionel, Griffin, Alice, Bev, Michael, Dale, Christopher, Ralph, Eleanor, Richard, Kelly, Kevin, Esther, Marie, Pius, Larice, Peter, Lyman, Cedric, Jerry, Debbie, Scott, Peter, Sarah, Ben, Brenda, Pierre, Michael, Wayne, Alan, Graydon, Charles, Adam, Eric, Edith, Martin, Paige, Mindy, Kathy, Wilfred, Teresa, Shane, Rochelle, and Dean, and all those who are responsible for their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways today, remembering Chelsea, Judy, Aaron, Courtney, Linda and Mary, Stella and Hazen, Sandy, Vanda, Wendy, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Joseph, Carol, Ethel, Sam, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sheridan, Sandra, Emma, Sean, Sandra and Randy, Brenda, Ryan, David, Sean, and Gordon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And let us remember this day all the faithful departed, especially Jane Hallett, Alfreda Story, Allison, Barbara Murr, and Kay McKellen. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light, light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to the with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdemeanors. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath caused forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you with all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should in all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, according to whose most true promise the Holy Spirit came down as at this time from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them both the gift of tongues and also boldness with fervent zeal, constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations, 
whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants of all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness. Mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant, that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy full church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy feet. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, 
and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore, therefore let us keep the feast. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ will be given for you to preserve the body and soul of the Lord Jesus Christ. Take and eat this remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you, preserve your body and soul in everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and you can be free. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our value, duty, and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without the end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 397 in the blue hymn book, hymn number 397. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the Jesus out of every nation, every 
The Lord be with you. <coughs> Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.